this, and this is an interesting question for both of you gentlemen. I, I th there is a way to monetize and actually make it into kind of a positive for fans in a way. Sure. And I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. I, I'll, I'll kind of explain why I feel that way. Tokyo Disney, they actually charge you a fee to use their monorail system. They charge you a fee to get onto their monorail system, right? But, but. Are you, are you giving them ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. Uh, yeah. no, but, but I'm, but I'm getting to, I'm getting to something good here. And I think that maybe, well, I, I'll, I'll just kind of say it. Mm -hmm. But the thing with Tokyo though, they charge you for the monorail, right? But in exchange for that payment, you, you're, you're, you're offered exceptional park maintenance. You're offered exceptional upkeep. Look what the kind of quality of stuff they get, right? Question to you guys, if Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World were to do similar things where they're like they're monetizing the monorail, they're like they're monetizing the attractions, but it meant quality stuff like what we see in Tokyo, would you be more open to it? It's kind of like Absolutely. If it was, if it was Tokyo style of how like upkeep and like they get the full on, like awesome animatronics, perfect technological right. ride systems. I mean, but if you were to ask me as of right now, no, I'm not going to pay to go on a ride system that smells like piss. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> With no doors. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look, they might monetize. Okay. But they charge a lot less per park. You know, for that's what? that's per park. Oh, per park. Okay. They charge they charge less. Interesting. So they do monetize. Look, it's when Disneyland when 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 Disneyland opened, there was an entrance fee and then there was you know, the ticket books kind of thing. Right. right? And the entrance fee <laughs> wasn't you know, one hundred and twenty-seven dollars, or whatever it is today. Right. Uh, it was, you know, it was like a, I think it was like a buck seventy-five or something. I mean, it, it was substantially less d getting in. It was still high. It, it, it'd be the equivalent of of like thirty-five dollars or fifty dollars, and okay. then you charge on the back end. Right. Then and you so pay I to get on on the on the om omnibus, and you pay for, like once you get in, yeah. right? Basically, right. Okay. So I think what people are kind of having this kind of notion of is just like, man, you're charging a whole lot, and and then you're gonna charge on top of that. You know, that's kind of like where the disconnect is. I think really, I think if 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 Walt Disney World wanted to monetize those things and, and bring in and bring in far more revenue because you, you know you're increasing per cap um, and, and all that kind of stuff, but you're maybe you're charging less to get in or or proportionate at least. Um, then yeah, I think I think a lot of people would go along with that. And, and look, I think there are I think there are smart ways to monetize the parks too. People yeah, that that like services that people would want, right? For example, you get uh, we we've, we've done this before. You you kind of go into a store and you go, oh man, that merchandise item that's really really cool, but it's like I don't really want to carry this around any, everywhere. Right. They used to have a service that you could could use at, at various locations that you could kind of turn your stuff in and they would transport it at the front of the park mm -hmm. yep. or in Walt Disney World's case they would transport it to your room but wow. who knows if they're doing that anymore yep. um what like monetize those things right right and make those things more convenient right I think, yeah. like those are the ways because in yep. in that instance it's a barrier to maybe buying that item at all yeah right? right if that if that if that's uh if that service isn't available I know I've made that connection multiple times, and it's like, look, yeah. you have all these shops all around you. You're you're doing impulse buys. There are barriers to entry. Like for example, they did data and study and research on, like just the act of pulling out your wallet was, with the data that they had, was a barrier to maybe getting that hot dog or maybe getting that that churro or whatever. So that's why the magic bands were implemented. One of the reasons was, hey, people could just scan it and there you go, you're off. So there obviously are barriers. Monetize those things. Right. Increase right. the services that maybe people haven't thought of, and and I think that's a smarter way to go go about it. I agree, Dre, and and that really kind of kind of plays to what I was saying earlier in terms of of still making money, still kind of upcharging. Yeah. 
but packaging it in a way that's a little better optics, you know? And I think the best way for Disney to promote that, especially for Walt Disney World, is sort of like how what Disneyland is doing with Disneyland Forward. I yeah. mean, even though Disneyland Forward is using that notion to get the city of Anaheim, you know, to play ball, but Disney World could use that type of promotion to say, hey, look what could become of all this. Here's a whole list of things that could be added to the resort. All we would have to do is, is all, are all the fans okay with, you know, this, this, and this? You pay for this, you pay for that, and we'll promise you, we'll give you all of this. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing too, like a Disneyland Ford kind of, kind of, kind of mindset or kind of philosophy. I think that that's, you know, you, you touch on a good thing, uh, a good point, George. I think if people understood that this money that they were collecting was, you know, a, a portion of it was going to be reinvested back into the parks. Right. Yes. And make them feel a little bit more comfortable. Because mm -hmm. right well, now, I yeah. mean, as Mickey Fuse has kind of said in his video and stuff, they're just funneling all that money and funneling it towards all these other places. And the yeah. parks get nothing in return. Right. It, it, it reminds me very much of like your local city. You know, people don't mind paying taxes if they know their taxes are going towards something beneficial to the community. If the potholes are getting fixed, if the roads look good, if things are maintained, people don't mind paying that dime. But when you're paying high taxes mm. and you can't even drive your car over 30 miles an hour because you're going to be hitting potholes and you're going to crack a, a, a rim or you're going to, right? Hey, then people uh, have hey, issues. Oh, uh, OG, you know about that? Do you know about that a little bit? A little bit, a little bit here in California. A little bit. <laughs> 